Ignite is an ongoing series of speedy presentations. Each speaker gets only five minutes and 20 slides that auto advance every 15 seconds. I'm Brian Lavender. Um, this is a project. I actually, I know there's a lot of hackers out here tonight that uh, can get things going quickly. So I'd like you to actually go to the URL, URL of my project here. It's a called NetGA. It's sort of a, a trick on Indianness. Um, download the code. Um, I'm actually a grad student at Sac State. This is my master's project I'm working on. I'm actually pretty excited, so I just thought I'd give a little presentation about it. And I also work at the California Legislative Data Center. Um, so basically, this project is inspired by my work in security. And I've been working with Snort as a part of an integration project with another tool called Awesome. And Snort uses these customized rules to identify attacks. So I was looking at this and I was thinking that, gosh, there should be a better way to automatically identify attacks. And basically, there's a plugin for Snort. It's called Spade, Statistical Packet Anomaly Detection Engine. And it uses probability, Bayes rule, actually, to identify an attack has occurred or not. And then it can basically, if there is an anomaly, then it can find the attack. So I was taking an artificial intelligence class, and at the same time with a study in the network security, and I did some research, and I found actually um, uh, some papers, and one of the papers I found was an implementation uh, using AI, or net genetic algorithms, written by Ren Hui Gong. Uh, and then, so I made a proposal, and I submitted it to my professor to do the same implementation, do the coding, and do originally the integration into SNART. Well, I ended up actually integrating to Improbe. So here's how the genetic algorithms work. Uh, it's basically a way you, you have to have, use audit data. You, you pick a set of random rules, create random rules, go through the evolution process, and then you end up with these refined rules. And so basically what happens, I'm going to take you through the process of generating these rules. Well, first of all, you have to have audit data. And so you have to have some sort of system to, to generate the audit data. So this is shows uh, systems here, and basically it's like the canary in the coal mine. What you're doing is you're recording the attributes of when the canary falls over, and that's when you know an attack has occurred. So what happened, instead of generating this audit data myself, DARPA actually has uh, data sets that they've already generated using the Sun basic security module. And so that sort of provided an abstraction point. So if you're interested in this software, you could actually generate your own audit data. Well, here's an example of the training data, or the audit data, actually. And if you look at this here, you can see that these are attacks, the ones that are in the orange, is attack type. And then we have these attributes here. Now, these, this is actually a list of the attributes, and this is what covers the chromosome. And this is the rules that we automatically generate. And what happens in the set of rules that we have, we only want them to identify attacks. So what we're going to do, we're going to go through this process we have the, and this is an overall diagram. So if you look at this diagram here and you don't understand it, I'm going to go through the details here. But it's a, basically a, a process that repeats over and over. We start with population and then we create a new population through a process of first, we go and look at, because we're trying to evolve to uh, identify multiple types of attacks, I chose to actually take the best two rules of each type of attack and copy it over into the next. Population. So if we have 400 rules and we have six types of attacks, we'll have 12 of the two, 12 best rules copied over. So then we go through the process of a uh, recombination. We t pick three random individuals, the two best act as the parents, and then we do this process of actually crossover. So we flip, pick random places, and then t pick that midpoint. And then we look at and see if there's an area that we can do mutation. And mutation will actually um, go and flip a bit. So if we have a rule that's converging in a certain direction, mutation may toggle and generate a new rule. So to summarize that there, these are random individuals that were generated from the start. And you can see there's a fitness function that identifies how well it identifies the rules and the attacks. And then what happens is the finish set, which will come up here. Uh, these are the rules here. And you can see the first two cover the RSH rule. And one would be a perfect score. That means that the rule only identified attacks and didn't, it didn't accidentally match uh, non-attacks based upon the audit data. So based taking those rules, take that, plug it into Improbe. Improbe is actually written by Luca Derry. It's a great tool. It actually, he's developed uh, tools to integrate into 10 gigabit now and to do a plugin that every second runs through these rules. 
So, and test to see if one of the rules matches the connections based upon the attributes. So if you want to, if you're downloading the code, you already compiled the code, you generated the rules, now you want to test out the in probe without setting up a whole tap, there's a way you can actually do this and run this. So basically this project is built on uh, the resources and the research of others. I've just taken a project and basically I, I like to say that uh, I'm, I'm uh, happy that uh, my project is built on the shoulders of giants. Yeah, that's a quote by Isaac Newton. Thank you.